Okay, in this session, um, I'll start to talk about using the curve editor and actually cleaning up some of this information, smoothing out some of the curves. Uh, I have made a slight change to this. I just wasn't happy with this hand. Uh, so what I've done is just taken this following through even more into this pose. Brought the arm right around. <clears throat> I've also just brought the fingers uh, into a more relaxed pose. And it just gives a bit of a follow through back into the pose there. A bit of a drag on the fingers as they come back. Okay. Could probably do with something like that on this pose as well. Um, so just to show where the fingers really do add into this. And don't leave them out. Let's just think where it goes from there. So let's just take these uh, and even just dragging them around this way. Uh, maybe just a little bit. Okay. This pose. Actually, may take these. And start actually bringing these out um, almost the other way. Grab this. Um, if it gets a bit awkward, just press Z to zoom in on these. And uh, just there you go, that's a bit better. Okay, um, yeah, so even the fingers um, can play a big part in this, adding to the character, adding to the weight into the drag. So let's start looking at the smoothing side uh, or the curve edit side. A good place to start is the hips. So if I just click on the hips, I'm just going to right click on these and go into the curve editor. Curve editor is always a bit daunting at first. Um, it's just a few things really to look at. So let's just look at this in terms of what's happening. Let's see if we can find somewhere where I can see both of these. So in the main movements on this, we've got our X, Y, and Z position. Um, if we just look on the hips, just on a local axis. WCR Z axis is up there. Uh, so, a Z position. So, this is a major movement on this because we've got this up and down. Okay, We are moving forward as well. We are moving on the X and Y. But let's just look at this initially. So, what's happening here? We're getting this big jump and then we're landing down, kind of easing out of this. Okay. Um, so in terms of the curves here, we are going down. So remember this is on the Z axis, the up and down. We're going up in the air, and then we're coming down. Carry on, flow it down. 
and then we gradually come up to a stop. Okay. So what do we want to happen on this? Um, well, there's a couple of things we could have happened on this. Uh, the first thing is that we could think about this more like if we were approaching the bouncing ball. So the bouncing ball, the force off, is a lot stronger. That's an initial kick. So the curve should really be a bit steeper into this. So let's look at doing that. I just grab this key. Uh, so the first thing is we, if I just drag this handle, what we're doing here is actually affecting this tangent here. We don't want to do that. We want this as sharp spring off. So we need to break this. So if we just click on this key and go over to this break tangents. And that just allows us to drag just one of these handles up and change this into a sharper curve. So it's a much more extreme. Okay, it's up in the air much faster. And then it's coming down. Uh, what I think I'll do as well is have a sharper curve into this, so it's coming down much quicker. And on this one, I'm just going to hold this a little longer. We just drag this out. I'm just holding this in the air, just a little bit longer, just a bit more anticipation on that before it comes down. It stays in the air a little bit longer, so the movement down is much sharper. Yep. Uh, another thing I'm going to do while I'm just in this is just clean up this here. Uh, this movement down. I just don't like the way this curve's going. Uh, so I'm just going to grab on this. This is just because of the auto tangent. I'm just going to drag this just to this. This is just a smoother curve here. We'll get a much better animation straight away. Okay. So let's just look at the Y position, uh, the X position, the Y position here. So these are both sort of moving forward together. Um, the other thing I'm really looking for here is just the smoothness of the curves. Okay, so this again is starting off quite gradually. And then going forwards. What I may actually do here, we've got this frame where we've actually got quite a straight line which is doing nothing. You really don't want these. Um, what I could do with this is give this a bit more anticipation. So because it's going this way, we could actually drag this a bit more backwards. Before it starts going forwards. Okay. So we can actually do that within the curve editor. And then this is going up. And we're carrying on that movement down. Got a bit of follow through on there. And then we're easing out. Uh, let's just check the Y position. So this we're kind of just moving forward in a linear fashion. Uh, I may just put a little more follow through on this just by getting this out a bit. Just check this curve. So we're trying to get quite smooth curves with no real straight lines on there. Just going to look at the rotation. So um, just familiarizing yourself with the rotations themselves. Just click on the rotation. We have our z axes this way, our x axes. Um, sorry, uh, our x axes forward and backwards, our y axes side to side. So our x rotation is rotating back on itself a little bit and then sharply coming forward, okay, from that position there. So let's just look at this again, this tangents just off, it's got the easing on it, I just want to smooth this out so we've got a better curve on there. We do want quite a sharp 
tangent on that. But what we are getting on this is this straight line here. Um, so there's two things we can do here. I could introduce a bit more follow through on this. Or I could just grab this key. Maybe I'll do the follow through actually. Uh, let's just grab this and let's just move it up a bit. So again there is just a bit more follow through on that pose. Uh, on that rotation. Before it's seizing out. So again, not leaving that straight line. Let's just look at the Y rotation. Uh, again, just looking for smooth curves. Got this here again, we've got this straight line. So what I'm going to do with this is take this one. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. So we've got a curve flowing through that section there. And Z rotation, I'm just going to look at this one, bring this out a little bit. Don't really need to worry about how it's going into this key. This is the uh, this is a keyframe set at frame zero, which is the initial pose. Uh, but what I do want to think about is this, this curve here. And uh, again, we've got the same problem. So uh, let's just lift this up, a bit of follow through on this. Before it comes out. And that is a lot of what you're doing with the splines. Um, you're just checking that the curves look okay, you're checking that the curves are giving you the right kind of movement, uh, the right kind of spacing. A lot of that is actually coming from the pose. If you did think about the spacing and the posing, um, it should come through anyway. And it's just tidying everything up. Okay. So let's just look at that as a preview. And remember, this is just the hips done so far. This is much more dynamic coming to this last pose now, much more weight in that. That's from just uh, a few tweaks in the curve editor. I'm just going to look at the spine. So a good thing to do now is move up through the spine itself. Um, then you can move down the arms or up to the head, down the arms, and do the legs last. Specifically in this instance, if there's a lot of movement in the legs, you may want to deal with those first if they were leading the animation. But in this case, it's very much the arms, the shoulders, the spine that are doing this. So. Um, just to look at this in terms of cleanup, uh, let's just grab one of these spine links, go into the curve editor. Uh, so the first thing is, let's just make sure I've got the right one there. Okay. Um, the first thing is we don't actually need, I don't know why this is on, the position values on these. The positions aren't actually needed. So let's grab these and let's just grab these keyframes. In fact, let's grab them from there. And let's delete. We only need the rotation keyframes on these particular objects. So uh, getting rid of the position data just cleans up the workspace. makes everything look a bit neater, just makes us uh, so we don't even have to worry about these these keys that were on there before. Uh, it's just showing us rotation keys down here now, which is much easier to see. So again, just looking at these curves. Remember this is the uh, rotation from the hips this way. Going quite quickly into that and then it's coming out. Uh, maybe I don't need as many keyframes as this. I'm going to again just go up here to put a bit of a follow through on that. I may actually get rid of this key here just to smooth that curve out. So sometimes some of these curves just aren't needed. If you have the right curve with fewer points, uh, it's much easier to control. Go through these. Um, Go 
a sharp turn there again this is as the other one good sharp turn from that point bit of anticipation there and then follow through Uh, we've got some straight movement on this. The uh, let's just maybe bring these down. And again, just a bit of follow through on this one. Uh, so you don't really want any straight lines at all on this. Okay. And all, all you do is you just carry on going through the spine, to the head if you want, um, down the arms, on the feet, on the knees, elbows don't forget, and shoulders, all the way through the character. Okay, um, can be a lengthy process, uh, but it, it is worth doing just to tidy up and polish all of the animation. And that's the end of this session. Uh, actually, let's just let's just have a quick look at a preview on this. Let's see how we finish off. So just those few tweaks, it's starting to look a bit more dynamic, a bit more weight behind that, still needs work, but um, well on the way. Uh, that's the end of that session.